Hello there, neighbor. I'll be touching on a few things today, such as the difference between the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Scarlet, judged by development kits, yet another way that you'll be able to download games onto your Oculus Quest, the ability for Steam VR to have full support for the Oculus Rift S now, as well as an opinion piece on why the Oculus Quest is better than the PlayStation VR. As always, all the timestamps and links are, you can find in the description down below. So let's just jump into it. As many of you already know, there has been quite a bit of hype recently surrounding both the upcoming consoles, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Scarlet. In fact, they've both been the subject of numerous interviews up until this point. Mark Cerny, the head of R&D at PlayStation, came out and tried to tell us what we can expect out of the upcoming PlayStation 5. And in response, Microsoft's Xbox boss, Phil Spencer, made Project Scarlet a part of his E3 presentation. During that presentation, they tried to hype it up as the next big thing in gaming and tried to make these huge claims that it was sufficiently more powerful than the PlayStation 5. However, developers are telling a very different story. Those that worked with both consoles' dev kits consistently found that the PlayStation 5 was more powerful. This is coming out of an interview from IGN's former editor, Colin Moriarty, who made this claim on his podcast, Sacred Symbols. However, he, he took that from information that were closer to PlayStation. So that being said, they may have access to earlier versions of Microsoft's development kits than they do PlayStation. However, the very fact that they do have access to both and they are claiming that PlayStation 5 is in fact more powerful does speak for quite a bit. This source, as well as the video link, you can find in the description down below. As long as Oculus is going to be stiff about what they put on the Quest, there are going to be ways that you could try to skirt those requirements. The newest one is through an app called SideQuest. This one is essentially a side loader that would allow you to find apps and games that had otherwise missed the mark by being either too powerful or by being incomplete in some method or another. One of those is of course the virtual desktop update that had allowed you to stream your PC VR games. While there are a few that are attempting to be re releasing or testing updates, this is, well, long story short, it is still a side loader and you have to go through a few secondary steps in order to be able to access any of this additional software. That link, as all of, that link, which would include all of the pertinent instructions, you can find in the description down below. A few days ago, Valve released full support for the recently released Oculus Rift S PC headset. Up until this point, they've been trying to work on expanding the support for the headset through a few beta builds. On it, not only would they be able to visually show the touch controllers on the dashboard, but before the update, it would end up detecting the Rift S as a regular Rift with three sensors. As a result, a few of the games in the store would flag the headset as being incompatible with those games that were otherwise compatible with the base Rift. And as a, as a feature of the Rift S, you can end up redrawing your gameplay space. Now, because of this support that Valve has introduced, you can track, or the, the system itself will track when that happens, so it will reposition VR content in the center of that space without the need for a restart. On top of that, the Next minor thing is that it's intended to fix numerous stability issues and bugs. So 
hopefully you have a, a better play experience while you're using your Rift S than you were previously. When you're comparing the Oculus Quest to the PlayStation VR, it boils down to just a few simple tasks. First up, portability, wireless, tracking, and of course selection of games, but I'll touch on that there at the end. Obviously, how does the Quest compare to the PlayStation VR when it comes to wireless? Let, let's see. Quest, no wires, completely, well, wireless. PlayStation VR has a huge wire coming out of the back of the headset that you've got to make space for. You've got to keep yourself tethered to the console itself in order to be able to play any of the games that you want to play. Next up, you've got tracking. I don't know about you, but I am constantly running into tracking issues on the PlayStation VR. I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm running into those, those horrendous issues where I'm trying to play Beat Saber or Skyrim or Doom or any of those games, and I just cannot really play them because... If I wander maybe two feet too far, or maybe even six inches too far, then I, I just get this horrendous black box right in the middle of my screen that says, outside of play area, and that just takes me out of the entire experience. And not just that, but wander, just trying to hit something slightly off screen, it, you can see it. You're supposed to be going there in that direction, but the wand just like wanders off. You you can just be playing and the wand will wander away. Oculus Quest, on the other hand, uses inside-out tracking on the headset. Four or five, I think it's five cameras that are going to be on the headset in a few different areas so that you don't have to worry about that problem. You can go over here like 45 degrees away outside of the headset, as long as you stay within that range, then you are good. You can move around, you can you can go wherever you it is you really feel like going, and you will be able to play your games without that immersion issue. Next up we have portability. Like I touched on with the wireless issue, well, issue, flaw, e either way, tomato, tomato. The Oculus Quest does allow you far greater portability than the PlayStation VR, as it will allow you to go on family outings, and you won't really, you won't really have to fear spending alone time with your family. You'll be able to stay off in your own little world playing Beat Saber or whatever it is, whatever else it is you feel like playing, even if it's like, I don't know, Moss or something. Some of those, whatever game it is you actually enjoy. You can go off, live in your own little world, and you don't have to live with your family or enjoy, well, enjoy is a strong word, but you don't have to deal with your family or regular reality <laughs> the way you would otherwise. Now PlayStation VR, like I said, it is tethered directly to the console which is going to require a constant power supply. That being said, Quest is going to require a battery, only has two, two and a half hours of battery life, so you'll still have to deal with your family at some point. That being said, the PSVR, you do not get that luxury. You're, you're stuck in that one room where the PlayStation is, and you do not get to move. Now, as far as selection of games goes, they're around the same ballpark. You have the, around the same quantity of games and the same quality of games, but you don't really get to... You, you have a slightly better option with Quest, 
just because it's the Oculus Store rather than the PlayStation Store. Although the PlayStation Store is not quite as curated as the Oculus Store, it's still around that same ballpark, so you still face similar issues as far as game selection goes. If you guys are still here, don't forget to check out my next video when I'll be going over our first look into Google's first entrance into virtual reality. If you liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.